Welcome back, peeps. In today's exciting episode, we are going to be answering questions from Discord. My name is Chad Wilson. I'm your host from Simple Cloudware. And today, the question comes from Asad Fiaz, and he was wondering, how do we host these Angular apps that we're creating in AWS? Well, we're going to do it. So keep your head in the cloud. All right, let's get started here. So there was a question about uh, how do I post my video on AWS? So let's uh, take the tutorials that we were uh, creating and actually add them to AWS S3 storage, which you can store a website for uh, about a buck a month. It's going to be less than that. So the first thing you want to do is uh, create your AWS account. Just go over here and fill out the form. Oh, this is our, our professional account. It's uh, your discretion. And then you fill out your information. I skipped over the uh, actual details of that. And just enter in your credit card. And then they ask you to verify your accounts in normal standard procedure. And you just enter in your code that they send you and you have an account. Easy as that. And for now, you can select the free plan. And even though you do need to enter in your credit card, um, just as long as you set it up appropriately, it's almost zero dollars. All right, so now we got an account. And so from here, we're going to need to log into the console. All right, and then once you get to your console, the first thing you want to type in is uh, S3. And we're going to uh, create a public bucket. So you just title the bucket whatever you'd like it to be called. Uh, usually you start with the dev environment and then make all your uh, particular environments here. So I'm just going to create this as tutorial 8. And then we want to set it to public. And as we're going through this, you have to uh, pay special attention to everything that says public. It kind of gone the opposite direction. When it first started, uh, you start out as public and then uh, you had to restrict. But I think with all the abuse, they've gone the other way. And I'm just setting this to East Coast. Just You can set it to whatever you want. There isn't really anything here to fill out. So we go to next. And... Uh, we're going to unclick this because it's going to be a public and then scroll down here and then grant public for the logs. All right, looks good. And then we're just going to create our bucket. So here we go. And then we can just uh, refresh this to show that we actually got a bucket. There we go. Couldn't be any easier. So then the next part that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to compile our Angular app and then uh, bring that into our empty bucket. But before that, let's uh, go and uh, set the properties. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this as a static uh, website. And then we're going to fill both of these in error and uh, index as index. That way uh, our routing will work. Um, in our Angular app. I'm just going to save that. Okay, looks good. Oops. 
And the one thing that we want to do is we want to grab this uh, URL here, and we're just going to save this for later once we move our files in. Just put this in another tab. All right, and now let's uh, get our files to put into this. So we're coming over to our tutorial number seven that we completed in the last video. And we want to set up our uh, prod uh, variables under environment. So we'll just uh, grab uh, a copy of our dev variables. And then we're just going to stick them in prod. And then remember that each uh, environment has its own uh, unique uh, keys and uh, API. So we're going to switch this base URL to the prod function because we're going to be moving this into prod and the host key and the environment. We're going to call this prod. And then the secret will stay the same. Let's save that. So that's all the configuration needed. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do an ng build with a configuration of production. All right. And you see how it's uh, created uh, these uh, three JS files from all of the uh, modules. There we go. So now we've uh, created all the files that we need to be hosted in AWS. So we just go over here to our distribution folder and right click and then reveal and explore. And we're just going to bring those over and go and drop these into our bucket. All right, here we go. And we'll click on the upload. And you can either drag or drop or you can uh, identify them there. Let's just drag them in. Okay. And once again, we're going to be uh, uh, very careful when it comes to setting the permissions. And we're going to set it to grant. If you don't do this, you're not going to see anything. There's lots of warnings. So this is a good thing. Okay, and then standards just fine. And that's it. Okay, so we have all of our files up here in the bucket. Then we're going to go over to our tab. We're going to see if we can see our website. And here we go. We can see it. So we go, okay, is this it? Is this all we need to be able to connect to an API? I'll bring over the network and see if we can connect. And we see that uh, we're going to the page, we have a successful call, but nothing is happening. So this is where uh, quite a few people get uh, hung up, is there isn't any response from the web server when you're making an API call. But the call is successful. And then you go, okay, well, what am I doing wrong here? Well. How everything is set up is there's this idea called cores where you have to give permission uh, to actually access uh, a particular API. And so what needs to happen is whoever you're getting your API services from need to give your URL access to actually call them and return something. So sometimes uh, you need to set it up with a particular provider 
or uh, at least you need to, to tell them that this is the URL that you're going to be accessing their API from. So what we'll do is we'll uh, configure that from an API a perspective, and then we're going to try this again and see that we will actually get uh, the response. And that's how you'll know it's a successful with no response versus a successful with a response. It usually takes a couple minutes for the site that we set the cores on to actually get itself set up. Okay, so now we have our here, which means that uh, our server of origin is actually sending back the data because it, it sees the particular um, uh, URL as a valid uh, URL to request from. So we can see we, we don't have any response here, but we go to our new request and there's our response for the server. So it's very important to understand uh, when you're dealing with a cores issue. And then once you got that solved, then you can get your token and then you can create your accounts. So we can go over here, just like we were doing from our dev box and create accounts and activate, deactivate and delete them. So that is how you put your Angular app in AWS and then actually run it against an API with cores. Congratulations, everybody. You have now added your Angular app to an S3 bucket. This gives you the ability to host your app for about a dollar a month. Keep your head in the cloud.